What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Mazik. I'm a fight guy. I'm a Forbes contributor, and I also write for Heavy.com, and I'm here with my partner, fellow Forbes contributor, fellow fight guy. He's also a Boxing Manager of the Year candidate for 2019 for the Boxing Writers Association of America. I think that's who it is. Whatever it is, it's the highest people who consider these sorts of things. Peter Kahn, what it, you know what, Peter? I feel like even once we get to 2021, Mm -hmm. I think we should still say that you're the boxing manager of the year candidate for 2019. I think we should just just keep saying it. What you I think? Mean, listen, it's a, such a strange year because 2020 is going by. Mm -hmm. And if you really think about it, uh, we could probably figure out right now mm -hmm. that Tyson Fury's fighter of the year, Sugar Hill Stewart trainer of the year. And you and this time you're going to win boxing manager of the year. They're not even putting on the ballot. And I ain't putting it on the back. And if they do, you'd have to argue that MTK shouldn't win it because they have Fury. It could be a clean sweep. No. Well, tell me what else. What would what would what would even? What I'm gonna tell you like prepare? this. I'm gonna tell you like this. If George Cambosis mm -hmm. gets a a championship fight agreement mm -hmm. before the end of this year, okay, you're too kind. Xander. Finishes mm -hmm. this year undefeated, which I think we oh, all God. know he probably yeah. will. Uh -huh. And we see, uh, and and Quentin Randall mm -hmm. has one or two fights this year, wins impressively. We right. already saw Nika on Tuesday win yeah. impressively against Isaiah Jones. And if we see, I, I mean, if 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 we if if Trinidad Vargas even makes his he doesn't have to make his professional debut. Today is his birthday, by the way. Seventeen. Today is his birthday. Yeah, seventeen. Happy birthday, yeah, Trinidad Vargas. To be pro. Yeah, you know if he even makes his professional debut before the end of the year and it looks great doing it, and if then Dennis Hogan gets a fight this year, and if a mere mom gets a fight and wins, who else is going to have? And then we got All you right, got on the right. female side. You got Nisa. Uh, if she medals, oh my All god. Right. Listen, you, listen. I love you because you love me. Okay? Hey, I'm, I'm, but I didn't say anything that wasn't factual. No, but I will say this: just being real, keeping it real. If Tiafimo fights Lomachenko in September mm -hmm. and beats him mm -hmm. and win and becomes undisputed lightweight champion, mm -hmm. I mean, there's some other meaningful fights that are going to take place, possibly that. Uh, you know, there might be some people that could be more deserving. I'm just saying. I don't think so. Okay. Well, Aaron Aponte, come on, man. This is it's what's happening right now in Florida as an entire boxing movement. You guys, yeah. you're hearing me say it now, but you're going to really recognize it in the next couple years. What is happening right now as far as a boxing movement, Peter Kahn and this whole group, Javier Santillo, I'm saying this is this is a movement that is happening and people are going to have to recognize this. If all I mean, obviously, things have to fall in place. Right. The right way. You know, nothing is promised. But there's something there's something significant being built to the point where, uh, you know, and we were talking about this before the show started. Um, but how we say the NFL is a copycat league right? or, you know, the NBA even because everybody wants to play like Golden State because Golden State was win is winning. Uh, everybody adopted the three, four defense because Bill Parcells, West Coast offense. Well, if Peter Kahn stable starts to rack up championships, we're going to see a lot of people looking at the way Peter Kahn is handling his people and his his fighters. And you'd be stupid not to emulate it if it's successful. So I'm just saying. Hey, look, I appreciate it. And, you know, I got to give a shout saying. out to Joe Santa Liquido from the Absolutely. Ring Magazine. Wrote a, a really, you know, he was pro, he's profiling all of the manager of the year candidates for 2019. Mm -hmm. um, he did a story on my friend Keith Connolly, who, who won manager of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he, he did a, a second story on me. And he's, and that just was out this past week, and it was it was a good story. It was uh, it was a it was a touching story. So you know, you guys yeah. can check that out. We'll put the link to it in the description so you can take a look at it. Um, but yeah, I mean, so and I learned how to say Nico uh, Nicolos Sekniashvili. Close, Nicolos Sekniashvili. Sekniashvili. Yeah, but we just call him Nika. Right. 
Right. I like to say people's names correctly. And Sekni Ashuli. Sekni Ashuli. It's not actually not even hard. But it looks nothing like it should it be. It looks spelled. like it's hard, but if somebody tells you how to pronounce it, then it shouldn't be hard. Yeah. Just don't picture the words and just say right, it. Exactly. Just Sekni Ashuli. Sekni Ashuli. There we go. I got it from now on. All right. So we are powered by Fight TV and we are presented by Bet Online. If you are watching this on YouTube, you should really already have subscribed by now because. 8,000 people know that we're awesome. Yeah. You might as well be in, 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 a, in a part of that group. And also, you should be liking the video. A lot of times, I think you guys are, are subscribed. It's like, here's the thing. We got 8,000 subscribers, but sometimes we only get like 30 likes. What yeah, is wrong with 7,970 of y'all? <laughs> yeah, and we're getting like 200,000 impressions a month. Right. Come on. Hit the like button. Show, exactly. tell, tell somebody you like them. You understand? We, we it, like it, you. In this time period... People need to hear that you like them. Yeah. You know, to hear it, don't you? Just, I do. I do. So uh, make sure you do that uh, as well. So let's jump right on into round number one. All right. UFC on ESPN 11 is tomorrow at mm. UFC Apex in Las Vegas. There are um, 12 fights still on the card, even though there has been a shakeup. Um, it's a lot of weird stuff going on. Matt Steamroller Favola was supposed to take on Frank the Crank Camacho on the preliminary mm -hmm. card. Favola, uh, his cornerman, Billy Quarantillo, who just actually fought two weeks ago, tested positive for COVID-19. So it, ha it happens. He had to get removed from the card. So yeah. he was replaced uh, uh, by uh, Justin James. And Justin James is now taking on Frank Camacho. Now, Justin James takes this fight on two two days' notice. Mm -hmm. But Frank Camacho is the one who misses weight by two and a half pounds. <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Second yeah. time Frank Camacho has missed weight by what, what I would say is probably an egregious amount. So he also right. missed weight outside of a pandemic situation. So I think it's fairly safe to say it's not all about the pandemic for him in terms of missing weight. So, But everybody else uh, weighed in uh, successfully. Uh, you could say most importantly the the – the, um, uh, the main event here, um, uh, Curtis uh, Razor Blades against Alexander Volkov, the heavyweight uh, main event is in place. This is a really weird fight because uh, Blades is number three in the in the in the promotion. Uh, so you would think that a victory over somebody who's in the top ten would kind of like guarantee him a championship uh, 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 fight. But it's a it's a weird dynamic right now in the UFC's heavyweight division because Stipe Miocic is the champion. He's locked in already to a trilogy fight with Daniel Cormier. Um, so that fight's going to happen in August. Francis Ngannou is literally waiting in the wings to fight the winner. Would be a rematch if he, mm -hmm. if he faces Miocic. And it would be a very intriguing fight against Cormier. But here's the thing. There is a chance that after Miocic, Cormier 3, both of them would retire. Okay, there's a chance. That's a conversation, right? If that happens, then the heavyweight championship would then be vacated. So if that happens, then what do you have for the heavyweight? Who fights for the vacant championship? You would think that if Blades wins this fight, he's number three. Ngannou is number two already. So Ngannou and Blades would immediately be elevated to fight for a championship. Well, Brian, not, not that simple. Does, doesn't the UFC just like make up, like make its own decisions? Like who's going to do what? You know what? Not as bad as boxing. What? It, it, no, not as so bad. This is just one organization. Yeah, maybe in which is why there's less ridiculousness because you have less people getting their hands all involved, but not as much as boxing. Like, very. That's why when an egregious matchup does happen in yeah. UFC, people are like, "What? How in the world?" Like the one coming up next week, right. Jose Aldo is fighting for the uh, vacant ban vacant bantamweight title, coming off a loss stepping ahead of the, a guy who he actually lost to. And he's simply getting this shot because he has a bigger name and many people believe he deserved to win the fight against the guy when he fought. So he fought Marlon Marais. Marais won the fight. A lot of people think that Aldo won the fight. So he what, what were you saying? So, so, so I, cut, the, I cut you off. You were right, saying so the, not the, so easy. The, it's not so easy because generally, if you would think of the top guy and the number one contender fade out of the picture, right. then the number two and the number three guy would then right. fight for the vacant title. That's not per that simple. Perfect sense. Not that simple because Why? Curtis Blades has already fought in Gano twice and got oh. knocked out two times 
Okay. So you could say I'm just moving back in the ratings. Why? But how can you move him back in the rating? Is he if he's number three mm -hmm. and he just fights Volkov tomorrow and wins? So there's no substantiating moving him back. So how why they put him so high in the first place? Well, because the only people he had, he's only he's 13 and two. Mm -hmm. Both losses are Tangano. He has destroyed everybody else. So the only person you can justifiably put ahead of him is Ngannou. So now, if there's a vacant title fight, who does who who does Ngannou fight? Does he fight Blades again for a third time? You know what this reminds me of? What does this remind you of? You and I had a conversation earlier in the week when I was walking, like at midnight, mm -hmm. and we were talking about Bernard Hopkins and Robert Allen. Yeah. Okay. Now I kept getting Robert Allen to become the mandatory. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. No one wanted to see that fight anymore. Again. Again, for the third time. The third time. Mm -hmm. But they had no choice. Yeah, but you know what? This is you're right. You're right. It I'm just saying, be, like it's it, it could, and and it, here's the weird thing about it. That wasn't going to go any different. Like Bernard's a better fight than Robert. It wasn't mm -hmm. going to. It wasn't going to go any different. He was going to win. I mean, the, I think one of their fights was a draw. But you just said that in this case, he was destroyed twice. He got stopped twice. Okay. The first time. Oh, right. He destroyed everybody else, but he got stopped twice. Right. This first time, uh, Blades was able to, he, he planted the, laid the foundation for you got to take in, you got to take Ngannou down and you got to get him down early. Okay. And so there was a little bit of a struggle at first. And then Ngannou caught him because Ngannou is so, such a massive human being. Mm -hmm. He caught him and his eyes swole up so big that they stopped mm -hmm. the fight. He was still uh -huh. in it, but it was, he couldn't see. The second time it was a little bit more definitive. He got hurt. He got stopped. Okay. So either way, you know. Do you want to so, see a third fight? Something your, about something, tell you? something in me says, like, here's the thing. I like for things to go in the order that they're supposed to go. Even like I'll give you an example. Uh, what was this fight that we just saw? Um, oh my God. It was, it was, it wasn't a great fight. It was a Garcia, Danny Garcia and I forget the fight that it was. It was a Danny Garcia, one of Danny Garcia's. Was last it recent? Fight. Yes, it was one of his was last. Was it Granados? No, nah, it wasn't that one. I think it was it. It might have been Danny Keith Thurman. I can't remember which one it was. Okay, right. But it wasn't an extremely exciting fight, just conceptually. Right. But in my opinion, it was a fight that had to happen mm -hmm. because of where both guys were ranked. Right. And even just, though Thurman won, it was closer on the scorecards than it might have looked. Right. And it, it so that it had to happen because that was the appropriate fight, even though it wasn't the most sexy fight. So I kind of in that way, I am a slave to the numbers in that way. If Ngannou's the next guy up, have him fight the next guy down for the championship, even though <laughs> that might have already been a fight that we saw. <laughs> and speaking about Bernard Hopkins, or it could be the mandatory with the guy that just ran around the ring for the first three minutes. Yeah, could be. Remember, remember that? I'm surprised yeah. you don't remember his name. The ran around the ring for the first three minutes? Yeah, first round, just ran around the ring. Hmm. No, I don't. I hope, which, it was probably in the 90s. How could you not remember? It was like a memorable fight on HBO where Bernard just stopped and stood still. I was literally you know was just doing laps around I, the I ring. I actually see, I see him standing there, and I'm trying to remember who and this was this is why people started complaining and this is when hbo kind of put their foot down about being forced to distribute um mandatory fights that didn't have real competitive value to it it wasn't john david jackson no 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 i'll remember the name when you say it andrew council nope keep going antoine eccles nope Probably in the 90s, keep going. Earlier 90s, then try 96, 97. Steve Frank, keep going. And I know it wasn't Segundo Mercado because no, nope, keep going. Yeah, Joe After Lipsy, that. Joe nope, Lipsy, keep going, keep going. William Bo James, keep going. Glenn Johnson, no, keep going. Simon Brown, no, keep going, keep going. And your boy, Sid, Sid Vanderpool, I know it wasn't him. Nope. After that. Well, then it was the 2000s then. Keith okay. Holmes. No, Keith Holmes. No, 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 no. Carl Daniels. Keep going. Marade Hakkar. There it was. Okay. And that was at Spectrum in 2003. Okay. 
I believe that's who it was when he just ran around the ring for the first minute. Go find that on YouTube. <laughs> You're like, go, hey, go find it. I'm not kidding. Be like, this is a he, race, bro. Someone watching right now probably remembers this. He's like, this is a race, bro. And Did I pull it up? in case you didn't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking at. You'll him. see. There's a point where I just stopped. The guy was literally like doing like the warm, like when you warm up and you're doing like the straddle, like from like just like galloping around the ring. Uh huh. It's almost like he bet himself to get out of the first round. Uh, yes, I think that's exactly yes. Yeah, I think you're correct. And he is just bouncing back and forth. <laughs> you see it? I wish I could put it on the screen. <laughs> He's just without running, getting right? the copyright. And tell him when Bernard just stop. And Bernard, and Bernard, yeah, Bernard just went stood in the middle of the ring and the looked at him like this guy is doing different things. Still going. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> Two oh eight. Two oh eight in the first round. He's Just got galloping him. around the ring. He, uh, somebody he must have bet somebody the over. <laughs> over one round. <laughs> right. Would it end in the third? Uh he re yeah, he retired on the stool in uh let's see. this guy literally I don't think he oh there's one punch he threw. He threw a jab and that was almost instinctual. Like he bounced he's bouncing around. Like this is the like the seventh or eighth round, and he already got hurt, and he's just trying to make it out. So okay, he actually stops and starts actually somewhat engaging at about one thirty-five of the first round. I mean, come on, but the first full minute, minute and a half, and a half he, he was didn't, just, he just moved, just doing laps. And I'm like, I don't even know if he he couldn't have been downloading data because there was nothing to download except for unless he had his step counter in his yeah, he, pocket. He, he was avoiding he was avoiding avoiding uh, being uh, super necessary. Yeah, yeah, he was going to be super necessary in a minute. Yeah, it was uh, in the round eight. He didn't come out oh, okay. for round nine. Well, so he made it a little bit, but that first round was it, interesting. Yeah. And but, the, but, the guy was 31 and three coming into that fight. But the point I'm making is like mandatories, you know, going back to the UFC and, and what we were talking about, it could become complicated. Yeah, I think it's a little different in the UFC, though, because you you don't obtain your rankings w with as much politics mm -hmm. as you do in boxing. Right. Like, I mean, guys can get rankings in boxing with, with a few phone calls. Mm hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it does it in 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 the UFC. You Ali Abdelaziz is probably maybe the most influential manager in mixed martial arts right now. Right, he can't make a few phone calls and get his fighter ranked. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's a little different. So you're the 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 top contenders getting title shots is more validated because we've seen this person perform against this person, that person. So you're like, OK, I see. Yeah, it, it's never quite as. Be, a, a, it's a smaller it's a smaller a couple of people like Dana White has 630 fighters on the roster. Mm -hmm. There's more than 630 welterweights. <laughs> you know in six states probably in boxing yeah there's just over two thousand active welterweights so i'm just saying that, i mean this and is that's so, one weight class like maybe like maybe like 2300 so so that's and that's one weight class so there's right. literally 630 fighters period right on the ufc's roster of all weight classes. well how many do you think are on the top rank roster if you had to take a guess 157 about 85 Oh, okay. Okay. I said that's actually much smaller than I thought. Probably lost another one last night. Yeah. Kaminsky. Just saying. We'll get to that later. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, I, I mean, did, so, I did pick Clay Collard. Just saying. Yeah, we, we know. We know. We know. So yeah, I mean, that's the dilemma with the heavyweight fight. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and for Blades, I can see how it could be tough for him because this is not an easy fight. And I know right. he's a he's a he's a really big favorite here. Uh, let's see if it changed since the weigh-ins this morning. Um, he the late uh, the post weigh-in, yeah, he's the same. He's minus four hundred five. Right. So it's but this honestly, I think it's a little deceiving. Uh, Alexander Volkov's six foot seven, and he is a big guy who knows how to use his length. Right, and he's not easy to take down. Um, really wide in the blower body, mm -hmm. and. But Curtis Blades a freak in terms of takedowns. I mean, the t the combination of technique, explosion, stamina is the perfect machine for a take. A per it's the perfect formula for a takedown machine. Right. I'm, you've you've seen Mark Hunt before. You've yeah. Seen him? Yeah. Uh, re wrestling background. 
Well, no, he's just he's Samoan. He is wide. He's oh, strong. Okay. Is a just an ox. Okay. And Curtis Blaze threw him around like he was an Aldi bag. Like I think it was like a twelve takedowns. And and I'm talking about of the slam variety. I'm not talking about of the pin your ankles together and make you fall back because you lose your balance. I'm talking about hoisting a man. Right, right. <laughs> in the air, throws. So he's gifted in that way. So I think that that's what most people expect. But he's also the dude's training in Colorado with Team Elevation, right. and they're training miles above sea level. Right, right. So his stamina now is stupid so it, it he's he's dangerous man he just can't solve in Ghana, but well let me ask you a question then not to drag it out too long mm -hmm. but give me another instance where someone in the ufc had beaten somebody two times mm -hmm. got the third fight and and delivered and got it done yeah just to kind of give some context I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. You guys have to help me. I was going to say, in someone the, in the in, chat. In the chat, you got to help me with that. Somebody who, first of all, fought somebody three times after losing the first two and got it done in the third fight. Um, I mean, if it stumps you. Yeah, I can't. I'm trying to think of, I'm thinking of trilogies like that. Right. Uh, oh. Did Liddell beat Randy Couture? Or is it um that one? Uh, I'm trying to see. Uh, oh my God. Looking at Chuck Liddell's record right now is depressing. He has lost, he has lost uh six uh what is this? Six of his last seven fights, which I think means stop. No, so okay, so he lost the Couture the first fight and then beat him twice. All right, so well, see, no, that's not the, the same. Inverse. It's not, the, not same. the same. Not the same. So I, I don't know if that exists. This could I really first, don't. This could be the first time, possibly. It, it could be, and, could and, be. And, and he does have the he does have the the game to beat him because it's a wrestling heavy game. So he does have the game to beat him. But I just oh oh here's one, Rampage. Okay. Rampage lost to uh, Vandalay Silva in 2003 mm -hmm. and in 04. Okay. And then he beat him in 08. There you go. There's hope. <laughs> so you fan is a chance. Yeah. And then he beat him again in the fourth fight okay. two years ago when Vandalay is 72 years old. So okay. Yeah. But still. All right. Yeah. So, but, what, yeah, so what about the rest of the it's card? It's interesting. The rest of the card, co main event, Josh Emmett against Shane Burgos. Burgos uh, this is actually one of the upset picks that I have. Okay. Uh, Shane Burgos is a minus 148 favorite. I have Josh Emmett winning that fight. I think that Shane Burgos is one of those guys who's far too comfortable in the pocket and in punching range to keep his hands as low as he keeps them. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a guy who, uh, you, you know, this is even in boxing, people who are big counter counter punchers mm -hmm. and athletes who are slick and have that defensive instinct, many of them like to keep their hands down. Right. And they depend on the head movement and they depend on countering from the waist and the hip rather than countering from up here because the opponents don't see the punches coming. But the problem with that is there is a nanosecond of room for error. And Roy made a career out of fighting this way, which is technically incorrect. Right. But when he got a little older and the punches, he would barely slip before and kept him in perfect counter position a little older I mean you get hit by that shot yeah and that to me is the the if you wanted to uh put a microcosm of what happened with Roy Jones career why he started to lose after winning for so long just that little bit of degradation of instincts and reflexes to me is what led to that Shane Burgle stays in the pocket he's still a young man mm -hmm. but he ain't Roy he ain't Pernell <laughs> and right. he gets connect. He gets hit too often to fight in that way. Uh, outstanding story. He had really bad scoliosis. He had to have several uh, surgeries to correct the, the hump in his spine when he was a teenager. Mm. And he was, there was 
they didn't know if he would ever walk and live a normal life, let alone compete at the highest level in a, in a sport. He does that. Uh, and he fights with a defiance that is indicative of somebody who had had that sort of a background. But I do think that it sometimes puts him in a harm's way when he's fighting at high level guys and Josh Emmett can crack. So I got Josh Emmett winning that fight. Um, another one to look out for is Lyman Good against uh, Bilal Muhammad. That's another upset pick that I have. It's a very slight upset because Bilal Muhammad is a minus 116. Lyman Good is a minus 104. Lyman Good looks like the dude you fight at the end of, of level five. It's almost a pick em fight. It's almost a pick em fight. Yeah, but Lyman Good looks like the dude you fight at the end of level five on some sort of fighting game. <laughs> and Lyman Good comes walking out. <laughs> <laughs> right. His 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 nickname should be the level boss mm -hmm. because that's what he looks like. He He's like a cyborg, but he just came back from testing positive for COVID-19 okay. like a month ago. So he, he I believe actually he's going to be the first fighter in the UFC to compete after knowingly testing positive for COVID-19. Right. So that's an interesting there. It's kind of good that we're getting there though. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's pretty cool. As long um, as it's non-transmittable. Yes. Otherwise that's a guarantee right there. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and it's over. But um, one other, the last fight I want to, well, two more fights I want to tell you to pay attention to. Uh, Tisha Torres is on a four fight losing streak. Now that sounds real bad. But three of the people that she's lost to are the mm -hmm. last three champions of the world of the division. So she has fought the murderer's row of straw weights. Right. Uh, and she's also fought Marina Rodriguez, who is considered probably the best prospect in the weight class. So she's four fights in a row. She's lost these fights. Been competitive in all of them, but she's lost them. She's taken on another top prospect in 26 year old Brianna Van Buren, four foot 11, little dynamo. Tisha Torres is only 5'1", so this is mm -hmm. this might be the shortest combined height of any fight in UFC history. I'll be honest, I, it probably is. And But Brianna Van Buren is the favorite. And I'm I'm sitting up here and I'm saying to myself, a fighter of Tisha Torres' caliber is in a position to be on a five-fight losing streak. And as a matter of fact, the odds makers have it that that is what she's going to get, a really? five-fight. That's nasty. That's nasty. So it, that's one definitely to watch. And then the last one is the first fight of the night. Max Roscoff is a freak grappler. I have seen every submission type of submission that you can ever think of. He had a fight two years ago that he submitted to do with what is called a spinal lock. Okay. Just sounds painful. The dude is in, insane. So he's a six foot one, 155 pound fighter. Make sure you check out his fight against Austin Hubbard. I do have, I have picked Roscoff. The um, odds makers have Roscoff. Uh, he was a late replacement as well as a minus 185 favorite to win that fight. Uh, Van Buren, Viana Van Buren is a minus 210 favorite. So those are both interesting uh, fights. It's a pretty interesting card overall. A lot of kind of make or break kind of situations for people, mm -hmm. uh, even though there's no title on the line. So that's what I got. So it's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Now, good stuff. you know, just to ask, mm -hmm. because I, I know you've been doing well, what's the overall record since UFC has been consistent? You know what? I didn't, I didn't update it after. But you did well. Time. I last. You last had like time. an 80% winning in the last one in 250, right? Yeah, it was either seven and three or eight and two. Um, the one before that, I think I was like six and five or something. It was a still remember 54% to win. So you're doing yeah, it was, fine. It was a tough one. So, but yeah, yeah, not too bad, not too shabby. We'll see what happens with this week's stuff. But yeah, um, I actually probably I, I may um look at this the the fight that got replaced, which is Frank Camacho and um Justin James. So we don't have a uh, a singular video for that. So but yeah, that's what I got for um yeah, well, round one. People can still go and look at the videos, mm -hmm. you know, some more complete breakdowns. Absolutely. Absolutely. For every every fight on the card. So with all that said, let's jump into our first between the rounds. What you got? So I lied. <laughs> I said that that was all I had on UFC, on ESPN <laughs> 11. What I also have, I got to we got to lay the groundwork. We're okay. going to talk about what I think is going to be the fight of the night. So we'll do that at the end. So yes, as, as of, of okay, yeah, as of now, gotcha. I, I'm there. I'm, okay, we're we're 
we're now in the place we need to be. Let's look at round two. Gotcha. That was that was the quickest between the rounds I ever looked at. <laughs> I'm still here. All right. <laughs> so. Listen, man, before you get into round two, if people yeah. only knew that we had a almost like a one and a half hour conversation we before did. even going, I was already emotionally drained from our conversation, yes, which took a, place just like this. That's a common thing with people right. talk to me. But it was like in the, so, you know, we've been sitting in these chairs now going on two hours and I was emotionally drained going into the show. You were, you were. I have that effect on people. It's, it's not, it's not on purpose. It just happens. Well, we got <sighs> round two. Yes. Uh, round two, we are talking many, 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 many. Oh, your favorite guy. Listen to me. Did I? You know your what? favorite guy. You know what? You gonna have to hold on one second. So I gotta do this. I got to do this. Are you gonna pull out the doll? Are we getting the Manny this? pillow? Yep. Yeah. This is for the next person that tells me that I don't love Manny. Oh, uh, there you go. You got the glove. You know, th look at this. Do you, you see got what the, it's saying? signed glove? You got it. Uh, okay. So the next person that tells me that I don't ride and vibe with Manny. Look, in your defense, and your do defense, you have one of these? If where you're sitting up here talking about how you, much you love hold on. Manny, you, you know I do. do no, I have to not and... you. I'm not oh, talking okay. to you. I'm talking to my haters. Do you have Listen, one of these? Your haters wouldn't be haters if you didn't say you'd rather have Floyd Mayweather's career instead of Manny Pacquiao's. It's it the matter. only reason they hate you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I would. Okay. I would. I got people on the in the comments telling me you're gonna raise a soft son. Listen, over a thousand comments. I know on, on that on that segment. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. Manny, you Manny, Manny. You're messing with the country. I, I'm not. I'm you not. against the Philippines. I love the Philippines. I know you do. I would like to. And go you there. love Manny. So let me set I that do. straight. Brian Mazik does love Manny Pacquiao. Yes. He just made a bad argument as to why he'd rather have a bad argument. A bad argument. I'm not saying that you couldn't. You, your argument is what got them going. Not the fact that you prefer to have Floyd Mayweather's career that's perfectly acceptable. It was the reasons that they got all crazy. You talked about Manny getting knocked out. Well, they didn't like that. They, they did. did not like that. Oh, you know, when Manny gets knocked out, he gets knocked all the way out. <laughs> I mean, they did not like that. Mocking the hero. I didn't mock him. You did. I, you did, I did I lay down? Did I lay down? <laughs> uh, yeah, like I put a bed back here. Just said, Manny did this. I didn't do that. No, but then you're like, it doesn't matter. I love you, and I know you like Manny. It doesn't. So matter. anyone that it's, doesn't think Brian doesn't like him, y'all don't. You he know does what? like him. Manny is one of my absolute favorite athletes. Yeah. Period. Yeah. We we share the same faith. Yeah. Uh, he the way he carries himself is the way I would aspire to carry myself like in public. Right. He's people say crazy stuff to him. He doesn't respond like angrily or anything. I want to act like that. Right. But that doesn't mean that I have to feel like I would rather have his career right. than a dude who I'm be honest with you. If you ask me who I'd rather have a conversation with. Right. Floyd or Manny. I, I would I might not even let my child talk to Floyd. <laughs> but listen, it, it wasn't the what; it, it was, was the why. That was where people got kind of crazy with just, you. It's, it's, it was the why. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's, I'm telling you, we live in this extreme world. Yes, and you have people to love say to hate everything exactly how I would say it. If you don't say it that if way, not, you're, you're not my friend. Or no, you're an idiot. Right. Or that you, con guy. Or you got stunned by a bee. That con guy. <laughs> Anyway, let's talk about Manny. And so yes. we're gonna have to call that segment something. Uh, you, we have to call it "Why Brian Mazik Loves Manny Pacquiao." Right. <laughs> but there's there's a lot of talk about Manny. Yes, uh, let's this fella it. here, Terrence Crawford. There he is. There he is. Look at he two. he wants Manny to be his next fight. Okay. That's what he said. Um, makes perfect sense. Um. There's so many storylines for this particular meeting that, that that this would be the easiest promotional job top rank ever has. It would be the easiest promotion job uh, the PBC has. It, 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 easiest one you could ever find. The man who used to be king at top rank 
against the man who currently is king at top rank in terms of the major draw mm -hmm. sort of thing. Same division. Terrence Crawford wants to get out of Manny's shadow in the eyes of Bob Arum and everybody who makes the machine run at uh, at for top rank. It's top rank versus PBC. It's all of that. It's African-American fighter against Filipino legend. It's established, unquestioned, first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the greatest of all time, against a guy who is on the cusp of getting into the next tier. I mean, do I have to do the promoter's job any more than what I no. just did? No, but you know, it's a good sign, Brian, because here's the thing. Right now, these conversations, and I can tell you because I've been a part of some of them on a different level. Mm -hmm. The conversations between PBC and Top Rank about their fighters fighting each other has been so easy yeah. and been so easy, easily to talk about amongst each other. Because Al, Al, Al has good conversation. <laughs> okay, you're not, you're not, you're trying to do Bob, but it's not a good Bob. But you tried. I love the, his delivery. His yeah. But that is a that that little fella is hilarious to me. Yeah. But he they're is. but they're trying to get stuff done. Yeah. So, Can you give me a Bob real quick? Can you? <sighs> yeah. Enough. <laughs> I, I can't even do it now. It's like you can't, I can't do it on demand. Enough of enough the writer, writer questions. questions. Listen, <laughs> Sean Porter is not fighting Chris Van Heerden. I don't care what you say. <laughs> I don't care if it's his birthday today. <laughs> Is it Chris's birthday today? Yeah. Oh, happy birthday, CVH. Yeah. Although I will say that that fight possibly could be happening. I'm joking around now. But Which one? Chris and Sean Porter. Chris and Sean. Okay. Sure. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. There are fights that could take place a lot easier now mm -hmm. than they might have been to take place in the past. And I, so, I forgot to even mention Chris in my little opening monologue about Peter Peter Kahn and the fight game advisors. I mean, you throw that in there too. Van Eerden gets a shot at Sean Porter in 2022. Mm. Or Keith Thurman. All I'm saying is that PBC is exhausted mm -hmm. the, the uh, round robin of mm -hmm. fighting each other. Right. And it only makes sense that they can find a way to work together mm -hmm. and make a lot of money and give the fans a fight they would like to see. Okay, Meaning, so, if Pacquiao and Crawford were to fight, okay, it's not so, so unreasonable to happen. No, I, absolutely not at all. So scale of one to ten, mm -hmm. hype level, excitement level, where would you be for Crawford Pacquiao? I'd be at a ten. I'm at a. 50. I'd be at a ten. You know why I'd be at a ten? Mm -hmm. Because I think Manny could win. I'm at a fifteen. Yeah, listen, Manny keeps proving people wrong every step of the way. Beat Broner. Mm -hmm. we, we've talked about this many times. If you take mm -hmm. away the horn fight, he hasn't lost in years. Yeah. And that wasn't, that was a controversial decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, there's been Jesse Vargas, then there's been Matisse, Matisse, then there's Broner, then there's Thurman. I mean, he's beating guys who are still in their primes while he's not even arguably, he's out of his prime. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And his inactivity is such that, I mean, he fights one time per year. So, I mean, I think that, I mean, Crawford fought in December. Mm -hmm. The last time Pacquiao fought was Thurman. Mm -hmm. Was that a year ago? February? No. Wait a minute. Pacquiao, Thurman? Pacquiao and Thurman. It wasn't, it was... Pacquiao, Thurman, I thought that felt like that was in... No, that was in... Um, it was July? July. So almost a year ago. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking Broner. Right. That was January. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. The point I'm making is that, you know, this the, the crazy thing about it is that they could have made this fight years ago when both these guys were still with top rank. Well, see, I understood why they didn't do it then. Right. Because if you do it then, you're you're allowing your roster to, to kind of devour each other and you don't it, it, it would have been different if it was like this right if you if this is manny's last fight on his contract with top rank and i know for a fact that i'm not re-signing him i know for a fact i'm not um and especially if i know if i believe if i'm if i'm top rank and if i believe strongly that terence is going to beat him 
And this is Manny's last fight. And he's I'm clear. We know he's not going to resign. He's going to go off and do something different. Absolutely. I, I'm motivated to make that fight then because now I get to use Manny in his last fight. Right. To validate Terrence. The torch gets passed whether or not Manny wants to pass it or not. And, and you're you're assuming you're assuming Terrence wins. No, that's what I said. I'm oh, saying oh, if oh. I'm, I'm saying if I'm top rank and right, I believe right. that Terrence is going to win, mm -hmm. if that's what I think, then I'm hyped for that. Right. Now, if I don't know if Terrence is going to win, or if I think that Manny's going to win, then I don't really want to make that fight because now Manny's walking out the door, and you're leaving me with a guy who has already been proven to be inferior to Manny. Right. So the other idea is that Manny fights Mikey Garcia, which had been rumored. Then that wasn't mm -hmm. going to happen. It's rumored. I mean, at this point, let's really look at the situation. Mm -hmm. Who can Crawford fight within the top rank stable right now that would allow them to do a pay-per-view or a high-level fight? Nobody. Nothing that you can build up right now. Nobody. Okay. So then you look at PBC. Who do they have that Errol Spence can fight that he hasn't fought? What's he going to fight? Ugas? I mean, he's going to fight Danny Garcia. We paid Ugas a really nice compliment, though. But it yeah, was also he was also backhanded after that. Right. <laughs> but said, what I'm saying is, what do you say? He said, Ugas is a good fighter, but he don't sell no right. tickets, man. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and look, and let's be real. I don't yeah. think Errol sells much many tickets either. I think he sells way more than Ugas, though. Okay, of course, but I'm just saying, like you know, he, it's not yeah. like he's selling out the T-Mobile Arena, and then you know his fight with Mikey Garcia. Without Mikey Garcia, they wouldn't have been selling those tickets in Texas. Right. But the point I'm making is that well, I know that's Errol's home state too, though. Right, I understand, but I'm saying even Errol Spence has been out for so long. He had mm -hmm. the accident. Mm -hmm. um, Sean Porter, you know, needs to fight. You know, yeah. he needs to fight. So there could be a scenario mm -hmm. where you have you know, you know what Errol those said fights about, on the same card. You know what Errol said about Sean Porter? No. He said that Sean Porter couldn't sell out a family reunion. <laughs> did he say that? <laughs> he, he has some funny ones, so those are good. He couldn't sell out a family reunion. <laughs> yeah, but listen, Sean gave, him, Sean gave him all he could handle. He did. He did. He said it before the fight, so... Yeah, yeah Sean, 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 Sean gave him all he could handle. Uh, that really impressed me, that fight with Sean. But what I'm saying is, if there is any time where promoters should be and probably are willing to work together mm -hmm. to make something, it's probably now. Should be right now. Yep. You, you, I would say because this is when people have to be the most open-minded and the most creative about what they right. can do. You so, know. you know, I, I mean, look, I know Bob's the one that's been pushing that narrative. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Manny probably doesn't have a problem fighting Crawford. Mm -hmm. So who knows? It could be, uh, you know, could definitely be something fans want to see. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. I just, there's just a point where Manny's going to have to retire. And don't it's you, just, did huh? you, don't you say it? What do you, that's going to be your segment. Peter Kahn says Manny should retire. That's your yeah, new headline. Yes. Just to get, get, just to get him off of you. you no, you're going to say you're, you just said, mm -hmm. you said, there's going to come a time yes. that Manny has to retire. And so now we're waiting Wait, on his downfall. Brian, 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 Brian from say? politics. Okay. <laughs> Never boxing. Manny will box till he's 100. He'll be 90 years old, all silver hair. Listen, he'll be I'm talking a, about something. <laughs> you did it again. There, you, you, you can't help yourself. Hey, you know what? Now they're going to say you're mocking you, him. Now I they're going to say you're mocking you him. Pull how, out the glove again. Pull out the how glove. How influential he is. You know what that glove is like? It's like saying I have a black friend. You got your Manny glove. Oh, my God. That is terrible. That, I so the man, that's a, you just no, pulled out the Manny glove. No, the Manny glove is saying you, I don't have, you, you have a glove to commemorate somebody that no, you, you hold in highest show. esteem. No, 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 no. You had to pull out the glove to show that, you know, hey, I, don't I really have, do like Manny. I don't have a Floyd Mayweather anything in here. But who said, you know. No I don't have any. But, but Floyd's fans aren't complaining. I love Aren't giving Andre, you a hard time. I, Andre Ward's like right there with Manny, maybe above Manny in terms of my favorites. They're right mm -hmm. there. I don't have an Andre what Ward about, anything. What about Roy Jones? I wish I had a Roy Jones glove. So let me ask your opinion. How yeah. does that fight go? 
Which one? Manny and Terrence? And Florida. I mean, and, and Terrence, yeah. I think that I think that Terrence knocks him out. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. I yeah, think I that mean, I think early Manny's speed will be a problem and the awkwardness. Uh, because Manny fights different than everybody else. I mean, boom, just land. You like, whoa. Like, I've seen guys who I know are fast, and they're like, they're startled by how much he can close space. Right. And then the, 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 like, the power, the, the, the power that he put on the shot when he dropped Thurman didn't look like it should be a shot that could knock somebody down. Right. He was just coming forward. It, yeah. it, was, just, it was the circumstance of Thurman going backwards, Pacquiao coming forward. Yeah. More of a, more of a balance thing. Yeah, and it, but it dropped him, you know. Right. And so, but that but, fight was closer than people. Oh yeah, he didn't destroy Thurman. He took no, it was a close fight. He took a lot of punishment. And my thing is that I just think that the way Terrence fights. But you think he stops him? Does it just beat him? I think. I think. I think. Um, for and, and 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 see, this is the kind of stuff that makes people get mad at me. The no, but listen, I'm going to preface it with this: Don't get mad at Brian for giving an honest opinion. Yeah, I, this. That's what's. That's what. I'll delete happen. all those messages. <laughs> I'm deleting all the comments. I just, I just feel like Terrence is such a, a, a fantastic counter puncher. Right. He's such a download the data through the first three rounds kind of a guy. Right. And Terrence and then, has, a, yeah. Terrence has a good chin. Right. And I think that at some point, Terrence sits on him, and he catches, da, 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 boom, mm-hmm. and Manny's gonna go down. That's just that's what I see, and, and I, I, yeah, I, you know. Listen, I as much as I as much as I love Manny, I picked Thurman to beat him, mm-hmm. and you know, the more time that goes on, it's just it's like you said, like we talked about with Roy Jones. Yeah, did we even talk? I, I, everything's like morphing together. Did we talk about that off the show or on the show? That was on the show. Okay, just. Yeah. just <laughs> <you know. laughs> It's going together, but, but yeah, it's, I, that's but it's what the I same think. concept. I mean, at it some is. point, it is at some point those reflexes for Manny are going to go. They are at Man. some point, uh, just the the you know the inactivity and the yeah. ring rust will catch up with him. Yeah, because I, remember, Terrence fought in December, and it wasn't a walk in the park. He had a good fight with Cavaliscus. It was, it was, but I think stylistically. The way that Manny fights mm-hmm. and the length of disadvantage and Terrence's reflexes and counter punching, I think it's a bad matchup. Mm-hmm. I think I think it's a bad matchup. I think he's too slick. I think it's it, um, it, imagine it's like Manny fighting Floyd in with a guy who is more willing to engage and who punches harder. Mm-hmm. To me, that's what that kind of looks like. Right, you know, and I'm is not saying. Is there anything about Terrence that would lead you to believe that he's lost a step in any way? Yes, uh, yes. Really, I think he looks thicker in the waist for fights now. I think he doesn't look quite as fast as he okay. used to. Uh, I think he probably needs to fight at 154 now. I think he would be his best self at really? 154. Really, I do. I, I think he's th- was he 31 now? Uh, you know, it, it would. You know, um, it's either that. Or hey, well, if not, that's the case, he still has to fight someone at PBC. Right. It's it, it's either that or he is understandably under-motivated. Right. Understandably. I would yeah, totally get it. a little it. frustrated. I, w- I would totally understand. Yeah, he and, wants and, that mega fight. And honestly, if you listen to his comments and the way he talks far more angrily and aggressively now than he used to. And I think it's a product of frustration. Yeah. You know, I'm doing my job. You know. I'm beating everybody they put in front of me, you know, right. and, you know, uh, you know, and, and I have good fights. You know, I don't run around. I have good fights. Look, listen, he unified the 140 pound division, mm-hmm. which was a big in, f- in, in a way that everybody wants. He has approached this game in the way that all fans want people to approach. Right. The game. So that was fantastic. Mm-hmm. He then won the welterweight title. Mm-hmm. He's willing to fight anybody. He will. I do believe that this will be the year where he where he gets those opportunities. Meaning, not necessarily, well, maybe in 2020, but maybe. but certainly this is the time. 
It, yeah. It's going to happen. One of those one happen. of those fights will manifest. Yeah, it's got to happen. So it's going to be interesting to see. But uh, let's jump into our second between the rounds. All right, I got to ask you. We're going to talk about this in a second. Mm-hmm. You had a, you had a pretty good day uh, week on yeah. top rank predictions. What was it? Turned out to be like eight or nine oh, fights. I only lost one. You just lost one. That's Lauren. I mean, look, not that they were impossible to pick, but I did have an upset in there. But then the one that I didn't pick was an upset. So did you did you love Lauren Hill? I love Lauren. Yeah. She's awesome. She's sweet music for my soul. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, but you remember. Hey, listen, I think I waited like two and a half hours for her to get on stage once. I'm just saying. Yeah. That that was a problem. That is a problem. And it's it's it was a a problem. It happens a lot, as a matter (laughs) of fact. Yes, that's the thing. It was a problem. That's the thing with Lauren. It is. Oh, okay. But it is, but yes, but no, uh, you only lost one. Clay, uh, you predicted Clay Collard beating David Kaminsky, yeah, we'll which was kind of crazy to people. So yeah, we'll talk about it in a second. So let's go into round three. Yes, ask the fight guys. Woo. What? <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to. You're do trying to do something different. Way. I know. So I that know. you will. We need music. Okay. Maybe we'll that. Maybe that'll, that'll, for that. Maybe that'll get you a little hyped up. Mm. What do we got? Ask mm. the fight guys. Mm. What no is one it, uses what? the hashtag. They don't. They don't. I, I think it's you. Oh, maybe bro. you could freestyle. Maybe not today though. I think I actually I think it's you that they don't why they don't use it. I think you don't inspire oh, right. them. I don't inspire them. I don't know. I think that's what it is. All right. So which 25 and under boxer will become the next pound for pound king of the sport? So they got to be 25 and under. Mm-hmm. And so so if they're over 25, they don't count. I bet you we have the same guy. And let's say it on. Uh, don't say it. OK, mm-hmm. I'm going to go three, two, one. We say it. OK, yeah. Three, two, one. In a Xander way. Zayas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that actually was. I love you, real, man. That wasn't my real. I know answer. who was your who was your real answer. Oh, that was pretty funny though. Actually, yes. I was gonna say, mm-hmm. but I I don't disagree with you in any way. I don't. You gonna say Devin Haney? No. Okay, I'm just just I'm gonna say, now. I'm gonna say Ryan Garcia. No, nah. I love Ryan, but you're talking pound for pound king. Yeah, pound for pound king. I mean, you, this this kid's only 20, what, 21, 22, 21, I think. He's not, he's not where he's going to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. And you I, know, I'm, look, you know, I'm a fan of Ryan Garcia. Okay, so you know here's that my I, thing. You know that I, but I'm maybe just I am confusing. Mm-hmm. Pound for pound king with pay per view king. Okay, sure. So if I say pay per view king, I can see Ryan being a hu- huge draw. Yes, huge yeah. draw. Yes. You know, but when I say in a way, it's only from the no, domination. It's, it's in a way. It's in a way. It is. It's him. You know what I'm saying? From that. No, it's him. I mean, he's pound. he's 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 on another planet. I mean, he he that that kid is just. I mean, I, if you were to say. You're going to go and try to, if you were playing a video game and you were creating a fighter and you, and you were giving him all these different attributes, what he can't be, he's 27. So he's out. Oh, all right. So he's out. Throw him away. He's out. I was wondering about that too. I think maybe that's why I I thought he was younger. Now his brother, his younger brother. Well, his brother doesn't count. He's not. Yeah. He's not him. It's not him. Yeah. So, but so now Ryan's looking better, (laughs) but, but here's the thing though. The reason I said Inoue is already dominating at the world championship oh, level. He, he's he's on another. Ryan, Ryan has more time to grow. Yeah, he's on another. That Devin dude. Haney has more time to grow. I need to see something. I, I don't think Devin. Something. I don't think Devin okay. Haney is going to be. Let that. me ask you one. How old is Tiafimo? Yeah, it could be there. And, I mean, uh, look, if he beats Lomachenko. Now, nah, and Javante is twenty-five. He won't be twenty-six till November. Um, Tiafimo twenty-one. Nah, he's older than that. He's got to be like 22. He's 22, and he'll be 23 next month. Okay, well, he he's a strong – he's a strong – Yeah, he's in there. He's right Since in. we're talking under 25. Yes, he's he's right in there. He's he's definitely right in there. Well, I mean, why why would uh, Gervonta not be in there? 
I I don't know. I just feel. Oh wait, how old is he? Javante's twenty five. He's twenty five. Okay. Javante's twenty five. Now now for what it's worth, you 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 take this with a grain of salt, right? If you look at uh, box Rex pound for pound rankings, and you look at the highest rated person who is twenty five or under, it might shock you. Who is the highest rated person who is under twenty five, or twenty five and under? Do we, do you would get, you would get never get sixty guess. seconds on this. You would never guess. All right, give me a second, okay? Under twenty five. So heavyweight division, no cruiserweight, no light heavyweight possible super middle i'm gonna say no yeah you, know, you, you, you just went uh, wrong okay so super middle mm -hmm. to tell me you said tell you yeah david benavidez oh, okay all right 23 23 years old mm -hmm. and in in box rex uh how, how old's canelo canelo's 29 right so canelo's number one in box rec in box rex okay. um, right uh pound for pound and so they're actually he's the youngest guy in box rex top 10. he's the only person under 30 in their top 10 um pound for pound ranking who is canelo okay and he's number one got it and in, in the top 25 there are only three four five six seven people in the top 25 who are under 30 and of course none of them are under 25. the only ones that are under 30 is josh taylor he's 18th Mm -hmm. in a way is 19th mm -hmm. in a way being under josh taylor is not appropriate in my opinion but uh josh warrington is 22nd is 22nd dimitri bivel is 23rd miguel burkelt is 24th and jose carlos ramirez is 25th. so where's tia Fimo in the overall picture uh nope i'm wrong the list went down wrong okay no the highest rated 25 year old is not david benavidez it is emmanuel navarrete Okay. At third, he's who's, number. Who's had a heck of a run in the past has, year and a half? He year. might be fighter of the year. He might be fighter of the year. Um, I think he'll contend with Fury more than anybody because of his activity too. Mm -hmm. uh, but he but, is. But Fury's victory was so dominating. It was. It was. But Navarrete is twenty five years statement. old. Yeah. He's twenty five years old. He's number thirty four. Tiafimo is number thirty six. Okay. And then uh, Mungia is thirty eight. Okay. There's no way Mungi is ahead of Benavidez. There's no way Mungi is ahead of Javante. Javante's 40th. All right, we'll scrap that list. Yeah, and Luis Neri is 47. I think he should be higher. Garbage. Yeah, I think get he rid of that higher. list. Yeah, I'm getting rid of it. So and scrap the David list. Benavidez thing because he's a good fighter, but no, that's not what that is. So, yeah, so it's 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 Emmanuel Navarrete is what they would say. I, I don't think that that old. 25. All right. Yeah, I'm not I don't argue with it. I don't think that he'll be the next pound for pound top guy, though, because I just don't know that he'll ever face the type of competition that will allow people to ever to elevate him on that level. Right. I mean, wh who is he fighting at super bantam weight that I mean, he could fight Ray Vargas, who's only 29, um, you know, and, and that would certainly I, I think he'd have to move up mm -hmm. to get that kind of love because that's the only other fight he could have that would you know that would be that would make that would resonate with anybody like that so yeah that's interesting pretty interesting question i want to hear what you guys have to say in the chat and what you have to say in the comments if you're watching this after this but yeah that's pretty pretty they're interesting like, they're like yeah these two in rare form today yeah I, they probably are and i am pretty rare the fact, the fact that i had to ask you if we talked about something in or out of the show. Yes, it's, it's, it's been one of those kinds of weeks. Uh, All right, so let's jump into the championship rounds. Fight of the night. Fight of the night on UFC uh, on ESPN 11. I, I got a couple ones that could turn out. Well, hold on. Wait a second. Are we doing this? Like, this is like, it's like yeah, Groundhog Day. I said Brian, that. I did it's that. fight of the night. It is. Not fights they, of the here's night. Here's the thing. They don't even always give out a fight of the night. Okay, Sometimes you they pick one. Yeah. You have to pick one. Yeah. You see, you can't. it can't be like fights of the night. Just run down the whole card. Yeah. Who's your fight of the night? I'm going to go Shane Burgos against Josh Emmett. Did you get Co last? Did you get last show correct? I did not. Okay. I did not. It turned out to be a heck of a performance because he turned the guy's lights out in 17 seconds. So, right. 
it was a spectacle of, of the night. <laughs> I don't know about the knockout of the night or the performance or of the night. night. Right. But yeah, I like Josh Emmett, Shane Burgos. I think those guys, like I said, Burgos gets in the pocket. He stays there. He he wants to trade. Josh Emmett's a fantastic athlete, can really crack. So yeah, but also watch Bilal Muhammad Lyman good. I just had to throw it in there. Could be a good fight. Well, you threw it in anyway. I had to throw it in. All you right. You just kind of gave it just, just in case. All right. All right. Now. Yes. The other side of the championship rounds. Let's talk about top ranks boxing week. Yeah. What stood out most to you in terms of like the performances, what your predictions were, how they went? Look, in large part, it wasn't hard to predict these fights. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like in large part, it wasn't hard to predict these, these fights. But um, what I would say is, uh, so we'll go with the good first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just, I had a strong feeling that uh, Clay Collard was going to beat David Kaminsky. Now, many people might be thinking, who cares? It was a six rounder, uh, whatever. You know, I'm not familiar with any of those fighters. But, you know, when you're picking and you're doing it from a standpoint of, of understanding the matchup, you can see where that could have been plausible. Um, and it's also I, important, too, I think. You know, it, uh, and and I, I don't know if you're going to say that, but I think it's really important because you, you one thing you you kind of I've learned a lot in the last two to three years. I always paid attention a lot to boxing and whatever, but the way the, those fights that you don't necessarily see, and when somebody ends up getting a title fight or whatever, and it seems to you like it came out of nowhere, understanding how that comes about. So Clay Collard right. just pulls this big upset against David Kaminsky. Do not be surprised if Clay Collard is now the opponent in a upcoming top rank featured, you know, thing right. against a uh, actual good opponent. So, well, look, th this is how the promoters operate. You know, mm -hmm. they step guys up at certain points, mm -hmm. and if the person can get past the test, mm -hmm. look, I believe that they still look at look. Clay Collard is a very unique guy. I think he he wills his way to. Wins. Remember, he had the upset knockout victory against Gallardo in the previous fight. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're not looking at him. I They see him as limited, mm -hmm. but they see him as the spoiler. Mm -hmm. And they see him as, if you, he's almost like a mid-level gatekeeper. Yeah. But I got to give him all the credit in the world. And look, I picked him to win mm -hmm. because of those reasons. Mm -hmm. Because he fought like I thought he would fight. Look. On Tuesday, Top Rank had my fighter, Nicolo Sekhnia Shuli, in mm -hmm. what they thought was a 50-50 fight. Mm -hmm. Okay? Against Isaiah Jones, who is 8-1. Sekhnia Shuli was 5-0. and mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, is they thought this was going to be a type of fight where Jones could have come in there, beat him, and they would have released Sekhnia Shuli. Mm -hmm. But instead, Nika dominated. It was a one-sided, lopsided fight. And he shut him out. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, they, we accepted Collard first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we were supposed to, I told you that. Yeah. We were supposed to fight Kay, uh, uh, Clay Collard on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But then they shifted gears on us and they made Kaminsky because we wanted Kaminsky first. So don't even be surprised if you see Sekhnia Shuli and Collard. Just, you know, what I'm saying is that they do this to test these fighters. Mm -hmm. And if they can't, get past certain levels, then they have to really reassess what they're doing. It's one thing for Josh Greer to lose to Mike Planilla mm -hmm. than it is for a guy in his sixth or seventh fight to lose. It's, just, it's a different level, but nonetheless, it's still a level. If, right. if Greer, who, you know, I was walking the fence on that matchup, and mm -hmm. if remember, I was talking about him having some trouble with was, right. it, was it Nieves in October, yes. mm -hmm. which which was his last fight. I was right. I was at that fight, and Nieves just didn't have the firepower to to really finish the job there. But he right. had Greer in trouble a couple of times. Yes, and it was a close fight. Mm -hmm. But my gut told me that Greer was going to come out and perform. And the two knockdowns, I watched that fight with you. Yeah, and those two knockdowns were the difference and like you said if greer fought him again yeah probably going to be greer all day yeah he's trying to stop him but he ran out of time yep and those two knockdowns 
But, you know, how classy was Josh Greer in the post-fight press conference? I was so proud of that kid, man. I was so proud of that kid. I was so proud that he's from Chicago. So proud of that kid. Just to, you know, we were just talking about this with a group of people before. It is easy to win. Right. It is hard to lose and lose with any kind of – when you win, most of the time people say the right things and they act the right way. But when you lose and you – give the kind of interview that Josh Greer gave. That was like, I was like, like, not that I like go around expecting bad things from people, but that was, you know, we always, we always talk a whole lot when somebody does something stupid, right? We do a lot of conversation. We analyze it back and forth. Why somebody is so low down. Well, when somebody does something as admirable and handles themselves the way Josh Greer did on on Thursday night. That needs to be talked about on Tuesday night. That needs to be talked about too. And look, I told you he's a likable guy. Yeah. So he's a, he's a likable guy and he'll be back, but he it's his second loss. He needs to assess certain things. My gut feeling mm -hmm. is he's going to make some infrastructure changes. Yeah. That's kind of my gut feeling and we'll see what happens. So Jose Pedraza and um Mikel Lespierre, that fight didn't happen because Lespierre's manager tested positive for COVID, mm -hmm. scrapped that entire fight. Mm -hmm. So that left us with Gabriel Flores and Josec Ruiz as the new main event for last night. Mm -hmm. And look, I, you know, I like Gabe Flores, um, friends with him and his dad and, and his, you know, his team. And, and uh, look, he, he did the job. Yeah. You know, he did the job. Uh, he came out, got the job done. Uh, you know, look, I think at this point, you know, he's still, he's only 20 years old. Yeah. What is he, 18 and 0 now? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you know. 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Look, Flores doesn't have one punch KO power. Yeah. But, but he's still grown into his man strength mm -hmm. and, and he's an excellent boxer. Yeah. Gabriel Flores was the youngest guy ever signed the top rank before Xander. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at 16. Mm -hmm. So, uh, look, he, he really, he, he, he really, he shined when he needed to. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know he says he's looking at a world title shot in the next twelve months. Nah, I don't. I don't. I think it's that's a little bit too aggressive for mm -hmm. one thirty. I think he's not ready for Jamel Herring or um, or Burchelt or uh, who am I missing? Um, Any that, of those guys? Right. I mean, right. Yeah. I, I mean. I think he would need a step up. I think he would need uh, an Andy Vences or an Albert Bell or uh, or an Oscar Valdez. I think he needs like a, one of those hurdles. And if you were able to get past one of those hurdles, then I think you could say, okay, he's earned his title shot. But he's going in the right direction. No, he's and, definitely and, going in the right direction. And, and they did it the right way. He has a strong fan base. He's got a great story. He's a good-looking kid. He can fight. Mm -hmm. um, you don't always have to get the KO to, to, to be successful and be respected. Mm -hmm. um, but he's doing all the right things. So yeah. I just I see him continuing to go down that path. Everybody mm -hmm. they've put in front of him, he's taking care of. And he's also had some adversity along the way. Yeah. He's gotten up off the canvas, and he still finds a way to stay composed and win. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I definitely feel like he's in, going in the right direction for sure. But I, I agree. That is way too aggressive. I think... His third, he needs two more fights before he gets into that place. I left something out. What's that? Giovanni Santi and, and Antonio DeMarco. Yeah, because DeMarco got robbed. That was a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as post fight interviews go, Santi was humble because I think he knew he escaped yeah. with a. Seems like it's just a good guy, anyways, for my uh -huh. first time ever hearing him talk. But yeah. S s you know, look, knew that he has things to work on mm -hmm. look i give those guys credit for taking that fight really right out of the gate mm -hmm. uh without really the full potential proper preparation right but it doesn't change the fact that i personally feel demarco won that fight yeah I thought and you know for a guy like that with eight losses who's fought some of the top names yeah, and for him Along to put together way. that kind of performance at this stage of his career at a time period where right. people are putting the shot fighter label on him. Right. Uh and as soon as the as soon as the decision was read, I said to my wife, I said DeMarco needed that more than Santian. But let me tell you something. You know how you know who won that fight? 
by the way by Santian's body language. Body language after the final bell. Mm -hmm. Demarco was consoling him. Mm -hmm. Santian was accepting being consoled. Yep. They knew who won that fight. I say the same. I say the same thing about the body language of Deontay Wilder after the first Tyson Fury fight. Right. Deontay. Deontay, when that decision was being read, and they said draw, Deontay was relieved. Right. I don't care what nobody says. Right. He was relieved. Yeah, but you can see the embrace, and and Demarco mm -hmm. was like, Demarco knew he won, mm -hmm. and Santian didn't didn't uh, really show anything other than he just knew he probably didn't do enough. Right, and no knew that he had, he, and even he said in his, in his interview, "I need to go back to the drawing board. I need, I got some stuff I got to work on." Right, yeah. But you know, it was a good fight. It was an entertaining fight. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think Top Rank's doing a good job. Like they, they don't have an easy job right now. I no. mean, tell me another major promoter that's promoted a show. Nobody. There isn't. There isn't. I, uh, somebody's coming back in July. I can't. I can't remember. Maybe which. we'll see. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right now I know the promoters. That are promoting. I know the UFC is promoting shows, and mm -hmm. I know Top Rank's promoting shows. Yeah, you yeah. know, maybe what ifs that doesn't that doesn't count. Yeah, you know, right now Top Rank has a protocol in place. They have a process in pl place. It might not be perfect, but boxing's back, and and they are leading the charge. Yes, you are correct, and uh, you can criticize productivity all you want, but productivity is better than inactivity. Right. And these been some, there have been some great fights. And you know what's happening? Yeah. The, the second fighters, shows have, it's, I don't know, for some reason, Thursdays has been better than Tuesday, the last, the both, both of the weeks. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know why, but I will say this. Um, there are fighters that are getting exposure on television, mm -hmm. not ESPN Plus, on television that normally would never get an opportunity 100%. to be in this position. 100%. Even my even my own fighter, yeah, even Sekhne Ashuli in a six rounder mm -hmm. would never have had the opportunity to yeah. be be um you know to be shown like that. And it's at value. This stage. It's so wow. much value. It's so much value in Mark Kriegel telling that story about how you found him in Greece. Okay. Uh, it's so much it's so much uh, value in that. It's so much value in having Andre and Tim Bradley sit there commentating about this guy and 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 making comments about do you hear the pop of these mitts? Are you hearing but, the sound of this? You so, know? Let me tell you, so let me tell you something. So on on Wednesday, mm -hmm. I was talking to Chris Algieri because he did the international broadcast. Okay, and I wanted his take. Mm -hmm. And then I um, I reached out to Tim mm -hmm. because it's easy to take the praise from Kriegel and Andre, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Tim was critical. Mm -hmm. But I value the critical part. Right. Because that's where I wanted to really see, because I value what Tim says, mm -hmm. and I wanted to see, so what, what did you see? What did you see could have helped him? Not that it wasn't an easy fight, but you know, there was a point where we all knew that Nico was going for the KO. Right. And my whole thing was, okay, so with your experience, with your success, with, you know, where, what do you see? And so that's, you know, getting those takes are things that we never would be able to get if we if weren't we being, on TV. If yeah. we're on TV. Yeah. 100%. 100%. So I, like I said from the beginning, I think this is a very valuable part of the, of the experience for some boxers. And it's going to be about who takes advantage of this platform that they wouldn't have had before. Right. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, that's all that we have for you today. Went a little bit longer, not as long as I thought we were going to go in round one. <laughs> that's it. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. So, uh, I, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure that you like the video and subscribe as well to the channel. Uh, it means a lot. It helps us uh, get seen by other um, uh, combat sports fans, the whole nine. So, uh, be safe, uh, be wise, and we appreciate you watching. God bless.